Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance EV. Today we're going to see how angry a Porsche gets when you've taken out its engine. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. For those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. We got the car driving the other week. Um, if you haven't seen it, there's a link up above. And that was really cool. To be able to car get the car driving, even though it was just inside, in and out of the garage, was a big milestone. But we're getting to the point now where, until I get the battery um, pack and start to build that, I'm kind of at the point where there's not much more to do on the uh, actual drivetrain side, so the electrical stuff, and we need to start looking at the car itself and what needs to happen to it um, so it can actually work properly with the, the electric drivetrain because I didn't even have the car's um, battery plugged in when I was driving the car in the last episode. I was just um, using a, a separate 12 volt, small 12 volt battery. So we need to start looking at the car and seeing How's it going to react um, when I plug in the battery and switch it on for the first time now that it doesn't have its engine in place? Um, is it going to freak out and kind of throw all sorts of warning lights and start beeping at me and things like that? Or is it not even going to care? I'm hoping for the latter. might be the former. Um, but yeah, let's get the dash pod reinstalled, plugged back in. Um, then I'll switch on the battery. Uh, we'll turn the key and see what happens. All right, definitely need to check my wiring to the uh, dashboard because it's not showing anything. <laughs> but on the plus side, the aircon and windows seem to work. All right, I've double checked the wiring. I had missed one of the uh, three block connectors, so this will be Take two. Oh, there's lights. Ah, I'm not surprised that we've got a check engine light, but overall it's not actually horrible. Uh, traction control is off, fine. Um, not too worried about that. Spoiler, I had an error on anyway and it's disconnected, so I'll need to double check that. Looks like ABS is throwing an error. Um, we've been messing with the drive shaft, so I've probably unplugged something. So I'll need to get through and check that, but um, I'm not overly worried. Uh, got a check engine light, as I said, so uh, <laughs> yep. Um, I'll check the engine. And yeah, we've got seatbelt warning for me. That makes sense too. And then the washer. Apart from that, it's not terrible. Oh, we got rid of one of the lights. We got the seatbelt light out. So this could be much, much worse. Um, dials are still showing what they're supposed to. Mileage hasn't changed, which is great. That'll tie up for the MOT. So I've got one warning saying that the traction control isn't switched on, which probably makes sense, but it might also be tied into the um, ABS warning light. So I'll need to to figure that out. Um, spoiler warning isn't gonna destroy anything. I know the spoiler works because I can put it up and down manually. I just need to see why it's flagging as a night light. That one's saying that I'm low on a uh, window windscreen washer. <laughs> I can deal with that. And there's the lovely check engine light. Um, the other strange thing I've noticed is that currently there seems to be an error on the transmission. It's saying that I'm in fourth um but in an odd way it's flashing so that's obviously i'm guessing because i've removed the transmission so we'll see if there's something we can um do to the the signal wire something we can bridge or or just you know set to to try and um kill that and then ultimately what i'd love to do is have the the wiring for the um forward and reverse and neutral on the um, inverter sending sufficient signal that it will interpret correctly 
on here. Um, but that, that's not too bad. And then obviously there are longer term goals. I want, when I've got a battery in place, I'll want battery um, to send the signal to here. Temperature would be pretty good. Um, take it from the, the motor or inverter. Oil pressure, I don't know what I'll do with that. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's um, looking in much better shape than I thought it was going to be. I had, I had pictures of errors everywhere. Let's see if we can see anything on the um, scanner. Okay, not surprisingly, um, while the instrument cluster isn't showing a huge amount of issue, there are faults showing. Let's take a look. That's helpful. Please refer to vehicle service manual. You are missing an engine. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of error codes. All right, we've just done a quick erase and rescan. Um, that got rid of a bunch of the codes. It's the main DME not showing any codes. Automatic transmission showing codes. Of course it is. It's not there anymore. ABS, I want to dig into a bit more because, as I said, I have been messing around with drive shafts and um, brake you know, brake discs, pads, everything. So there's probably something just unplugged. And I also um, changed the master cylinder. So I, I just need to check all the connections on that. Alarm system has been showing a fault since day one, um, but not the end of the world. Um, I have a problem with the central locking. It's a pain. Yes, I've disconnected some of the passenger compartment sensors. So I was double checking a couple of the warning lights. This one's actually the brake pad wear sensor, which I've replaced on all the brakes that I've updated so far, but I haven't actually plugged them in. So it makes sense that that one would be showing up. And the climate control is kind of working. Um, I'm guessing if I start trying to use the aircon, it probably won't work too well because the aircon compressor isn't being spun. But yeah, everything else is working. pretty cool. I think we were making it a bit easy for the car. Um, so while the engine's out, the engine control unit and the um, gearbox control unit are still plugged in. So just as an experiment, I'm going to see what happens if we unplug those and then turn the car on again. Um, if nothing else freaks out, we might leave them unplugged um, and we'll see what we can do with the space. The two control units live under here. Um, some of you might have seen my video where I stripped out the entire interior and that um, did a bit of investigating, figuring out where things were. So there's control units under here and then uh, relays in that on this side. So we're just going to undo the bolt here in the middle, two bolts at the side, um, get this off and then get the, the units disconnected. So here are the control units, a um, ton of wires going into them, we're just going to disconnect them all and then try and uh, turn the car on again. Yeah, not having that connected is definitely going to cause something to go wrong. Alright, let's see what happens this time. Anything that's actually made things a little bit better for me, because um, <laughs> it's gotten rid of the check engine light. So still got not enough washer fluid still need to attach the brake pad wear sensors and fix the spoiler but apart from that we've got no error messages now the interesting thing is going to be to see what happens when um, I actually drive it and do any of the um, speed signals um, on the uh, the speedo do any of those actually come from the ECU or are they coming direct from the the wheels uh, because that that's obviously something that we need to we need to have working taco I'm gonna have to do something about um, we'll get a signal from the inverter somehow and get that spinning um, and likewise the others but I mean the important one from a is this car roadworthy perspective is all these error lights and um, things like the speedo uh, so we've also got a digital speedo so it'll be interesting to see 
um, do those actually end up working without any of these things plugged in. I'm going to leave them plugged out for the moment and um, yeah, we'll go from there. So just testing some of the other controls, um, the lights seem to be working fine. I can get the, the normal lights, fog lights, everything like that turning on perfectly well. Um, the high beams indicator shows up and they, we get the high beams when I, when I flick that. Indicators aren't working, but I do know that um, show you here. I, you have to take the um, hazard switch out to to remove the the dash pod this thing um so i took that out and i'm just wondering if maybe i put it back in that will allow the indicators to work but in order to do that i actually need to find out where i figure out where i put it okay we've put our hazard switch back in place um let's see what happens anything new or worrying flicks on all right nothing new there Let's see what happens if we flick this switch. Fine, we'll do it this way. So in the answer to the question, how angry does a Porsche 911 get when you take out its engine? If you look just at the dash and warning lights, the answer is not very. Um, as you saw, there were a few things popping up, but actually I think a lot of those lights were on anyway um, when I had the the engine in place. So yeah, there's not a huge amount lost there. Um, but we're not just looking at dashes and warning lights. Uh, we need to also think about the actual drivability of the car. And at the moment it is suffering. So you lose things when you remove the engine from a car. Um, we already knew that, for example, the brake booster wasn't going to be adding any, any value at the moment because there's no vacuum to it. So the brakes, when they're firm, are exceptionally firm. Um, and that's just not the only thing that you lose. When, once you take the engine out, you lose pretty much all of the auxiliary um, components that were driven off of the, the belts on the engine. So that's brake boost. Well, brake booster comes from the... Um, usually comes from the um, pressure on the manifold but the the rest of them are driven off the auxiliary belt so you've got your power steering so that's gone um, air con that's gone as well uh, water pump again also no longer there so the one that I noticed most while trying to just get the car in and out of the garage was the power steering um, you know, a steering rack designed for to be power assisted um, with the relatively small modern steering wheels is an absolute pain to drive, uh, especially with the wide tires that this car has. Um, I tried to take some video of me just trying to turn the car slightly and um, yeah, it wasn't pretty. The car steamed up with the effort that I was having to put into it. Granted, it was a cold day, but um, yeah, it makes it undrivable at, at low speeds. Uh, you really have to manhandle the car around the place rather than just being able to, to maneuver it. So that's going to have to be sorted out. Um, brake booster is going to have to be sorted out. And then we're also going to need to cool the motor and inverter. So water pumps going to have to be sorted out. And all of those are going to have to be electrically driven from the, the 12 volt circuit. So I'm going to do a um a piece on that uh, at some point in the future and look at all those different components that you need and how we how we go about it but yeah so the overall answer of how angry does a porsche get when you remove its engine uh, it doesn't show it but it it definitely uh, punishes you afterwards so that was a bit of fun um and turned out much better than i thought it would the other thing I want to try and get done today is to do a bit more troubleshooting on the brakes. So we replaced the brake master cylinder last time, but I'm still getting some um, squishiness 
for want of a better word. So what I want to do is just troubleshoot through the system. It's probably down to uh, you know a bit of air in the system that needs to be bled. Um, I think some of the bleed screws have been stuck and probably haven't been bled for years. So, but I just want to track through the system briefly, check like the ABS pump, uh, make sure all the connections around there are good. And then, um, yeah, just go around, look at the bleed screws, see if we can bleed it a bit, uh, potentially replace them. I've got some new ones, so that'll, um, that'll hopefully make things a bit better. Well, the new brake booster definitely improved matters. I'm still not 100% happy with the brakes. So I just wanted to check one other place before I go scrambling around underneath the car. Um, this panel here hides the ABS brake pump. Um, so there's a ton of uh, brake pipes and everything going in and out of it. Uh, I just want to double check that they're all tight, secure and there are no leaks. Well, that's looking good and secure, no indication of any leaks or anything, so, um, yeah, the problem must be elsewhere. So I'm going to take this as a sign that I should quit for the day. Tried to undo this um, bleed valve and just decided to shear on me. Um, I'm guessing it hasn't been, had anything done to it in many, many years. Uh, so we're going to have to try and tap that out, which isn't going to be fun, but I'll save that for another day. So there we have it. I mean, it's almost a real car again. Um, well, a real car with the equivalent of a thimble full of petrol, but, you know, <laughs> it's moving. Um, the brakes are continuing to frustrate me. Uh, as you saw, you know, things are sheer, still shearing off on this car when I try and undo them. Um, so those are gonna be headaches. I'll probably do the rest of it off camera and just update you once once it's done because I'm sure you're sick of hearing me talk about it. Um, but I think from a kind of information perspective and that the system is not too freaked out by the fact the um, that the engine isn't there. So there's not a huge amount I need to do in terms of trying to get warning lights working again or or anything they seem to be working as they're supposed to be um, what i do need to do eventually is get the the dash wired up so that it's displaying information that's effectively coming from the inverter um, but that's a, a kind of longer term goal the bare minimum was just to make sure it wasn't shouting at me um, i would like to see if the speedo works i think that would be a useful piece of information to have but we'll have to wait until I can take this for a bit more of a test drive. I think the big things that are kind of in my future with this are probably around those ancillary components that we've lost um, effectively due to removing the engine. So getting the power steering working, getting vacuum into the system um, are probably the two priorities to get things moving. And then I'll need to start figuring out cooling for the motor and gearbox but i hope you've um yeah i hope you've enjoyed this series so far and that um you know if you're interested please do subscribe i'm trying to capture as much information as possible about how how you go through a project like this and the both the challenges and the victories um i'm really enjoying it and i hope you are too but yeah thanks for for joining us on this and we'll see you next time